Hi there, it's Professor McDonald. In this video, we'll learn about the standard deviation. The standard deviation is a descriptive value for a data set. It describes the amount of deviation from the mean. Let's look at each of these words individually, just in general, to gain more of a sense of what we mean when we say standard deviation. Well, the word standard is something that's used or accepted as normal or average. The word deviation is the action of departing or something that has deviated from an established or accepted standard. So other words like diversion, digression, departure. In statistics specifically, it is the amount by which a single measurement differs from a fixed value such as the mean. Now, before we get into the mathematical formula, let's review some of the symbols we're going to see. We have types of describing values here listed, the size or the number of data values, the mean, the average of data values, the standard deviation, which we're learning about now, which is a sort of average of the distances from the mean, the variance, which is actually the average of the squared deviations or you could think of it as the standard deviation squared. The symbols that we use will depend on whether we're talking about a measurement coming from the population, the, in every single member in the population, and then we consider it a parameter, or if it's from a sample, then it would be considered a statistic. So the population size is a population parameter denoted by the capital letter N while the sample statistic for size, the sample size, is using the lowercase letter n. The mean, or the average of data values, if it's from the population, we would use the Greek letter mu, pronounced just like the kitty says. Not the letter m, not the letter u, but mu. And then we have x bar, which is the sample statistic denotation. We have standard deviation denoted as sigma for the population. Looks like a little O with an extra little floof on it, and that is the lowercase sigma. The uppercase sigma is used to instruct adding a list of values. Then we have lowercase s for the sample statistic, that is the sample standard deviation. And the variance is sigma squared, which means that you can literally take sigma, raise it to the power of 2, and then you have the variance. Or it works the other way around. If you have the variance, you can take the square root to get back to the standard deviation. And then, of course, for this sample variance, we have s squared. The standard deviation as I mentioned, is a descriptive measurement. And when we're talking about a sample statistic that we're trying to use to estimate the true population parameter, the standard deviation is one that is biased and sensitive to extremes, meaning it's not a resistant measurement. Now, neither one of these things means that we should not use the standard deviation or that it's useless or bad or anything like that but it's just something we need to be aware of as we're interpreting our results. The standard deviation for the population has this formula where we take the squared deviations, add them together, together, and divide by n. So underneath there, you see the average of the squared deviations. That's your variance. And then taking the square root will bring it back down to scale. The standard deviation from the sample looks identical except for the difference in the symbols used. S for the sample standard deviation, X bar for the sample mean, and dividing by N, the lowercase n, but now we're subtracting one before we do that division. So that's different. And the reason we do that has to do with the fact that it just targets the true population standard deviation better when we do this. And that actually is related to the use of the sample mean 
which is the estimated mean rather than the true population mean when calculating these deviations. So they're related concepts there. Dividing by n minus 1 is necessary because of the use of that um, estimated mean. We have formulas that we can use in Excel to verify our calculations. stdev.p for population, then insert the array of x values, and likewise for the standard deviation of the sample, but using dot s is uh, the formula for, st for sample standard deviation. A deviation is a distance between a data value x from the mean, x minus mu, or x minus x bar if it's a sample. S is not a resistant statistic because it is, ex it is sensitive to extremes, but it's important to notice that it can only be inflated by the presence of extreme values. So the reason we talk about this here is because we have um, some values that are sensitive to extremes, like the mean, will be dragged up or dragged down if we have very large or very small values that are extremely far away from the mean. But the standard deviation can only be inflated by the presence of extremes because the standard deviation is a measurement of distance from the mean. And so whether it's above the mean or below the mean, those values are going to create a larger overall average deviation. We also know that S is a biased estimator because it tends to underestimate sigma. And we divide by one fewer because when we do S targets sigma better. And the sample variance S squared, which is an unbiased estimator because it targets sigma squared. So that's interesting. We have a biased estimator S that doesn't target sigma reliably. But the squared version of S does target the squared version of sigma. Now let's look at the mathematical formula applied with Excel in a spreadsheet using the population standard deviation formula. So notice we have all our x values here. We calculate the mean of the population. Subtracting that from each and every x value gives us these deviations. And notice how some are positive and some are negative, resulting in a total deviation of 0 which makes it problematic when we're trying to estimate an average deviation. So we raise it to the power of 2, which makes everything positive. Each deviation squared, then added. Now we have a meaningful sum that helps us understand the amount of variation in the sample. Dividing that by the sample, or in this case the population size, gives us the average squared deviation which is our variance. And then because we've inflated all of the deviations by squaring them, we bring them back down to scale by taking the square root so that the units of the standard deviation are the same as the units of our ir original x values. Looking at this with the verification, we have the standard dot p. Here is the sample standard deviation formula carried out in Excel, where we have the formula S equals, as it's shown here, and carrying that out would involve everything looking the same, except for when we get to the part where we divide the total of the squared deviations. Instead, we're dividing by one fewer to get our variance, and then take the square root. Verify this with stdev.s. You've just learned about a descriptive statistic called the standard deviation. Next, we'll learn how to calculate the standard deviation step by step using the mathematical formulas for both the population standard deviation and the sample standard deviation. This will be tutorial style, so you can follow along. Learning how Excel will make it easier to use this formula and how to verify our final answers using the pre-built Excel formulas. See you there.